It may sound crazy, but your crosshair placement has everything to do with aim. Crosshair placement. It's one of the most fundamental skills in Valorant. Wherever you peek, wherever you hold, if you're trying to take a gunfight, you're using crosshair placement. But most of the guides you've seen actually don't really understand crosshair placement at a deep level. So I'm going to give you guys the truth. What's up, guys? I'm Royal G, a top 100 Radiant coach and content creator. I'm here to solve the problem. The biggest problem I see in the Valorant community currently is that everyone knows about the fundamentals, but barely anyone understands the fundamentals at a deep enough level other than the pros. With that being said, this video is dedicated to teaching you everything about crosshair placement, the fundamentals, why you might be struggling with crosshair placement, and a startling truth about crosshair placement that barely anyone understands. So make sure to listen closely, because this can change how you approach crosshair placement completely. So I'm going to first quickly tell you the biggest lie about crosshair placement, because my plan is to build the concept from the ground up, and I don't want you to think that because I'm not addressing it, I'm clickbaiting you. Most people think that crosshair placement is a product of game sense that substitute your need for aim in a gunfight. This is a massive misconception and a lie that much of the community shares without further thought. But to understand why this is the case requires building up the concept from the ground up. And that's why we can't jump immediately into correcting this problem. But before we return to the basics, if you're watching this video, chances are you're trying your hardest to rank up in Valorant and you're giving your all to reach your rank goals this coming year. What if I were to tell you that there's a program that's so confident in teaching you that it can help you rank up at least five divisions in eight weeks or your money back? Introducing the Immortal Roadmap Program. The Immortal Roadmap Program is a premium coaching service that has helped hundreds of students hit Immortal and Radiant and can be your ticket to reaching the top ranks. Their coaching team consists of top Radiant coaches like Kong Pecky, veterans with VCT experience like Screwface, the sixth man on EG when they won champions in 2023, and top tier analysts like Comet who helped ascend the year they won champs in 2021. With a star studded lineup like this, it's no doubt that you'll be in good hands for achieving any rank goals you have. So if you're interested, make sure to click the link in the description. The first 15 people that sign up also get additional one on one coaching, so make sure not to miss out, and thank you Immortal Roadmap Program for sponsoring this video. So let's quickly run through the basics, because from my experience as a coach, the most simple concepts are often the most overlooked. When we think about the function of crosshair placement, what we generally define it as is the way you position your crosshair to make your aim as efficient as possible in a gunfight before you take them. Whether that's in the form of placing at head level for headshots, holding for an enemy swing, or pre-aiming the areas you're about to peek into, crosshair placement's core value is to reduce the amount of aim adjustments you need to make during a potential duel. But just because it's simple doesn't make it easy, of course. Otherwise, we would all have perfect crosshair placement. So where do we go from here? There are a few very common tips that people dish out like headshot placement, predicting enemy positions, and practices like familiarizing yourself with the map. They get you familiar with the idea of what crosshair placement is, but the application is very deep and practically confusing. This is what I consider the tip of the iceberg, because it's the easiest thing to see and recognize. So let's take a step back and think a little bit more about our definition. If the goal is to make our aim as efficient as possible before we take them, then what we need to figure out first is how to make a gunfight efficient. I think one easy answer is that it needs to minimize the amount of time to kill. So we want to be able to win our gunfight as quickly as possible. Ideally, the enemy peeks and we kill them instantly, or we peek and all we do is stop and press mouse one as soon as we see them. And of course, how cross replacement plays into efficient gunfights is by minimizing those aim adjustments necessary. For starters, we could try predicting the enemy's position or movement. For example, if I know my enemy is hiding in this corner, I can peek and pre-fire him for a free kill. Or if I know the enemy is coming from this direction, I can place my crosshair there to prepare. In some sense, it's being a aware of where my enemy is and using that information to place my crosshair. But it's usually not that easy. I'm sure we've all held an angle on someone before but whiffed when they peeked. Some people may say, maybe you're holding the angle wrong, or you need to jiggle that angle instead. You might have even watched a pro hold the same angle and get free kills. This is typically the point at which regular players start scratching their heads and wonder, what am I doing wrong? And naturally so, because a lot of players only have the surface level tips to work off of. Unfortunately, most cross replacement guides don't go past the tip of this iceberg. But that's also why I'm making this video, because it's something I think many players need to understand. So the first big mistake people make is to think that cross replacement is a skill that you can understand and improve on by watching other players. Consider this. If Demon 1 can hold an angle and hit a shot with his crosshair placement, does that mean that you can too? Obviously not. Demon 1 is cracked as hell and he's a much better player than all of us here. But at the same time, his crosshair placement is perfect in theory. Why then does it not work for us? The answer is pretty simple, because we don't have his skill set. And if we don't have his skill set, then we can't place a crosshair like he does. But why is that the case? That's because your own limitations differ, and that changes your crosshair placement. For example, what's your reaction time, what's your level of aim, 
and what's your level of focus? If you're an iron player, the way you hold an angle needs to adjust for your iron skill set. So if Demon 1 holds an angle like this, and I, a Radiant player, holds an angle like this, maybe a Platinum player would hold it like this, and an Iron player would hold it like this. This is to be aware of the fact that our focus and reaction time might not be as well practiced as someone of Demon 1's caliber. So on the topic of reaction times, I think it's a good idea to dispel a common misconception people have that reaction time is completely genetic. There's a component of reaction time called reflexes that you build over time. It's like if you see the same Soba dart over and over and over, at some point, you'll be used to reacting to it and break it before it even pings. Of course, focus also works in the same way. You gain more focus as you practice, as well as becoming confident and more clear-minded when you play the game. All of this is interlinked, so maybe I'll make a separate video for this at some point. But the point of me bringing this up is to say that no, you're not screwed if your reactions are slow right now, and yes, you can totally improve that time even if you're a boomer like me. So this is where I feel it's important for me to bring up a past topic that I covered in another video, which is my video on why game sense is for the weak. In that video, I talked extensively about how people make this fundamental mistake of treating game sense as the most important aspect of the game for players improving, and end up with weak fundamentals. I definitely suggest giving that video a watch if you want to understand more. The reason I bring this up is because it ties exceptionally well with cross replacement as a concept, because currently, most of the community treats cross replacement as a game sense based substitute for aim. You see, the surface level tips like place headshot level and pre-aim corners and read where the enemy will peek are all framed in a way by most creators as some form of decision you make, like it's a product of game sense. And here's the funny part, it's true confused yet? Okay, so to be more clear, I agree that these are in fact a product of awareness, which is technically game sense, and awareness is a really important factor in cross replacement. However, what most people don't realize is that even though you need awareness to use cross replacement, what differentiates good and bad cross replacement is actually the mechanical aspects of cross replacement. But didn't we just establish that cross replacement is meant to minimize the amount of aim required before a fight? And this is where I share the paradox about cross replacement. It has everything to do with your aim. Let's say you're clearing up short on bind and your team wants to rush in or fight quickly. This is how a Radiant player might be able to do it. Notice how I make these adjustments smoothly while still clearing space in the process. But what about a lower rank? To figure that out, I asked a gold player from my Twitch chat to try doing the same thing and clear short. Notice how in this case, clearing space is a lot more rigid and less efficient. Of course, there's one way to solve this, which is to slow down. You can take your time and peek each angle slowly and clear that way, but there's a few problems with that. First. It's slow, which means your pace can't keep up with rushes. Second, there's always a chance someone peeks you after you've cleared a spot, so the chance of being caught off guard increases. Here's a quick question to think about. Does that mean your game sense was bad because you got caught off guard? Third, you're forced to focus more intently on where you aim and sort of prepare for each peek. So this one ties to both of the points I just explained. Not only does it take a lot of focus to clear each angle intentionally, but if you focus too hard on what you plan to do, you might not be ready for what's happening in front of you. The other alternative to going slower is to speed up. But this runs into another fundamental issue, which is the fact that if you're trying to keep up while pathing forward, not only is it hard to make the adjustments, you also have to mentally keep up, which is to say that if your aim is weak, you'll lose focus because you're too busy worrying about where you're aiming at, while also running into more dangerous areas of the map where you need to be more focused. It doesn't matter if your cross replacement is perfect theoretically, because you aren't focused enough to stay in full control of your actions. It's also why people autopilot sometimes and clear an angle, but then don't even react when an enemy is there. So a crucial point to understand here is that depending on your level of aim and cross replacement, the way you clear space is different, which determines your maximum effective pace in game. I think the fundamental connection that we can draw here that is incredibly important, and something that I see no other guides really notice or even realize, is that cross replacement isn't a about removing aim from the equation, but instead using your aim preemptively in order to remove the need for aim when you take the gunfight. Moving your crosshair from one angle to another requires time and the better your aim gets, the less time is required. Part of it is your accuracy of adjustment, and another part of it is your control over the speed of the adjustment. It may seem pretty obvious when I lay it out, but this perspective fundamentally changes how we should view cross-replacement when using it in real time. You can't really consider cross-replacement for a specific moment without considering the lead-up to that moment, because practically, you don't hold the same angle from round start to round end. Of course, there's exceptions, but you get the point. If your aim isn't good, it doesn't matter if you have great awareness or even an amazing understanding of where you should be placing the crosshair. If I'm switching angles and I need multiple adjustments to do that, then that's extra time needed to adjust, which means less efficiency in applying my crosshair placement. So let's try to visualize how this might hurt you through an example. Let's say I'm peeking out to hold an angle at truck. If my aim isn't good enough to make that adjustment as controlled and as efficient as possible, then 
and I would probably not be on the exact spot I think my crosshair placement would be most effective at. That means I need to make a small adjustment or two, which also means I need to slightly focus on making that adjustment. Now, if an enemy peeks me at any point during this micro adjustment to better place my crosshair, what do you think is going to happen? Well, you're just more likely to miss. But Royal, surely that small span of time isn't that important, right? In most cases, maybe not. But unfortunately, it can be. Not just for losing a fight you might have won, but if you're not aware that it was your aim holding you back in that situation, you might even come to the wrong conclusion. Oh, my cross replacement was off. But you didn't realize that you lost focus because of your aim. So next time you hold a little wider, but you're more focused this time and you shoot a little early. Must be the nerves. Maybe he's good at this angle. Maybe this is a bad angle. Then you start hesitating, and you don't have a clear mind when holding that angle in the future, which then affects your confidence and might make you either avoid that angle or feel uncomfortable fighting that angle again. So when people say Valorant requires less aim because it's mostly cross replacement, they fundamentally misunderstand the actual purpose of cross replacement. Because it's not less aim, it's more efficiently used aim. This is the ultimate misconception with building cross replacement that has flown under the radar for far too long. Why is it that a pro player can clear angles so efficiently and comfortably and not you? Why can pro players hold angles that you can't seem to make work? To put it simply, your aim sucks and that makes a huge difference. So if you want to improve your crosshair placement, you need to improve your aim. And funny enough, in order to improve your focus, why not practice the most focus intensive skill in the game? Aim. And that's why cross replacement is a topic that basically everyone in the Valorant community gets wrong. It's not a skill to remove the need for aim, it's a tool that lets you use aim more intentionally and efficiently. So the better your aim gets, the closer you get to being able to hold angles like Demon 1 can. How ironic, right? So many coaches and content creators try to tell you that cross replacement is somehow meant to reduce the importance of aim in Valorant, but here I'm telling you the exact opposite. The better your aim gets, the better your cross replacement gets. And the better your cross replacement gets, the more your aim matters. So give aiming a try and let the results speak for itself. Hey guys, lately I've started spending more time making guide content because it's always annoyed me that there's so much lukewarm or straight up bad advice in the Valorant community. I want to change that. If you're still here, then you know that the next step is to build up your aim. But few people realize the impact of movement on their aim. So check out this video right here and it'll help you understand. With that being said, take it easy and see you guys there.